More than three shakes is a wank. I'm grinding as well. <laughs> it's quite sharp, isn't it? Is that hard? It drags on again. That first bit's the worst bit. Doesn't matter how much climbing I do, and these hills never get easier. Although they're not even hills, they're just fucking pimples. It's because you ride for like 30k and you suddenly hit a little ramp. Your heart rate's nowhere, you're not warmed your legs up, so everything hurts. As you can probably tell by the mud, since the last video, I've changed the country. Right, so that's the bike chain, drivetrain clean. So we're going to be riding this bike all week in the mud. I'm not going to bother cleaning the whole bike, so I'll just keep the drivetrain clean keep the new uh, chain and uh, chain rings clean and uh, have a cup of tea and get warm it's uh, amazing to be riding again where there's like mud on the road and all sorts of stuff on the road around the farm tracks and stuff and it's cold but, uh, people complain about it in the UK but I have to say it's actually quite amazing to be back and riding on these kind of roads there's just no traffic in some of the country lanes and there uh, it's such a big difference to where I normally ride um, there's still obviously not many hills around but it's still a challenge it's got its own challenges so you ride out to the hills and they're short when you get to them your heart rate's normally quite low and you haven't really been warmed up so they, they do sting and uh, yeah some of the little lanes around here are really quite punchy so uh, looking forward to a good week of riding hopefully get over there man flu British cup of tea as well. <laughs> Sam Pilgrim in the house. continues I'm now in Northumberland I'm on my way to a place called Rothbury uh, which is home to quite a bit of a legend a guy called William Armstrong I think his name is who sort of pioneered all the power generation from water and steam I did a lot of work with turbines so that's where I'm headed so I started riding just outside of Newcastle and I've just stopped outside a place called Scott's Gap for a bit of food and there's a lot of places around here named after the kind of border feuds between the Scots and the English and I think Scott's Gap is probably one of them, but uh, I'm on my way to Rothbury now. It's another 10 or 15 miles from here. It's quite a lot of climbing and it's 4 degrees, so I'm just standing, sort of basking in that sun like a, a reptile trying to warm up a bit. But uh, 
I like I love Northumberland. It's so empty of people, and uh, it's just beautiful. Like any time of year, even in February when it's really cold. Let's get back on with the climbing. So I've just left Rothbury, had a little bit more headwind uh, component just to get through. A bit more cycling east now, you can see probably here that I've got at least some tailwind component. It's like one of those days where it's like a headwind gimbal. You know, the headwind just follows you, stays in the same place. You can probably tell by the direction of the sun. I'm now heading south. I've got the northwest behind me, so they've got a pretty good tailwind component. There's Rothbury back over there. So I've got to go over these uh, small lumps and start heading back towards Newcastle. Uh, sorry about the wind noise. Nothing I can do. Tried to stick a bit of cotton on top, but it came off. But uh, let's get into these hills. I'm doing 38. And uh, I haven't pedalled for about half a mile. I'll draft that quad bike as far as I can. There's so many roads like this one in Northumberland and Cumbria. They're straight and they just look like they're taking you to the sky. And uh, I don't know, I just love the tyre though. Nothing else. But a straight road and the moors. And it sort of reminds me of that bit from Lord of the Rings when Gollum led Sam and Frodo to that marshland. And it's this sort of ride when you're on your own. You go through so many different emotions, like on the way out, on the way north, I was just cursing the headwind. Now I've got a bit of different landscape, a little bit of a tailwind. I'm heading south, so I've got the sun on my face. And uh, just find yourself giggling to yourself and coming out with little shrieks of joy. And there's uh, a ride like this where you get mixed emotions. It's the ones where you really sleep well. And it's so rewarding, you know. You'll get a good sleep tonight. But there we go. Just popped over a thousand and 60k. On the way to Elston now. I'm gonna climb Jibber Hill. The Jibber is a, a cross and a noose. They used to hang people on. I think it was in Newcastle and they've moved it to this little village, but it's called Jibber Hill. And I think they've still got the noose hanging from the thing. So depending on how I feel, might have to stop Strava there and end the ride, but yeah. There's another rise coming up towards those turbines up there. So there's the gibbet. Should I do it? I don't know. There is the climber just came up. It's about 200 meters in gain in about 3k. Should I do it? Should I end it on the gibbet? So I wasn't quite right with my information. The gibbet cross there. In 1791, the body of William Winter was hung there. I don't think it was used to hang the people of Newcastle. I don't know where I got that from. I can't really quite read that. It's all a bit wintered. So there we go, home now. 3,050 in total, 106K. And 1,400 meters. So not a bad ride considering the bloody wind and uh, 
how cold it was. It was really good fun exploring completely empty roads. And it's quite bleak in places, it's quite deserted. I like that sort of riding. All in all, really good rides. Really enjoyed it. But uh, probably not going to wash the bike that much because I'm going to do it again tomorrow. But uh, drivetrain always, always, always work on that. Get the grit off it, the sand. Really, really good ride. I love enjoying those sort of like more bleak, exposed roads. Um, and it's quite raw. Okay.